Hey guys, today I wanted to share an interesting scenario. So normally when Wizard of Coast sends out a nasty letter saying that they're going to investigate you, there's not much that can be done. And that's because lawyers are incredibly expensive. The lawyer I use for my startups, or I have used previously, not for the current startup, but from another startup, his name is Daniel DeWolf from Mint Levins, and he charges $800 an hour. And normally it's not just $800 because he has to charge for his secretary, for his associate, which is another $400. So if you wanted one hour with him on the phone, it's about $1,400, $1,500. And that's okay because he wrote the book on startup structure and investment vehicles. All right, so I've learned from this guy. His name is Van Austin, and I was lucky enough and very lucky to have him as a professor, one of the greatest minds in constitutional law. I took many constitutional law classes. I, took, I wrote a term paper with another very famous professor, Professor Devins, and it was a one-on-one -on -one paper from a semester, which actually I needed to extend the paper over summer and the paper was about the Supreme Court and how they make decisions and how the lower court affects how the Supreme Court makes a decision based on strict scrutiny, rational basis, and in immediate scrutiny. But anyway, I wanted to talk about my professor for a little bit. He was voted the 10 most qualified persons in the country to for appointment to the Supreme Court. And he would never, he would be ashamed if any of his students backed down from something like this. So I'm not going to. And the reason he used to swear at us all the time, the assistant dean had to sit in the back of the room to make sure he wasn't too offensive. He was a very strict believer of the First Amendment. And yes, I took a First Amendment class. So I took my Constitution Law class. I took a First Amendment class. I wrote a paper about how the Supreme Court reaches its decision, and in particular, the swing vote. I had a great education about the Constitution Law. And I'm very proud of that. Um, that I was able to take a class right after my class. I believe he retired. Maybe he taught one more year. But I, his First Amendment, I mean, his big deal was the First Amendment. This guy is famous beyond what, if you are a legal nerd and you like the First Amendment, Val Austin, he's, he's a dude. And he would be absolutely embarrassed and ashamed if I backed down from from something like this. They responded recently, and they responded with another very vague response, which I'll show you at the end. And that's how, that's how people get, and companies get in trouble, is they have very vague, non-enforceable, or selectively enforced law. So imagine a law where you could enforce it for some people and not enforce it for other people. That poses a big danger. It poses a significant danger and it would, under the constitution, if the government was doing that, so here we're talking about a publicly, a publicly traded company, Hasbro, which is different from the government. So your first amendment right only applies from the government standpoint. It does not apply to private companies. So if you're an employee and you say something really offensive, the company can let you go because that's not First Amendment. That's you being an idiot. Wizard of the Coast is probably used to dealing with people who don't understand the nuances of the First Amendment and when it can be applied. And the nuances. So here, the relationship I have is a very strong relationship. It is very much protected. I am a customer, and I purchased cards. 
This is not my opinion. This is fact. I am a customer who purchased cards from a local game store, from a Walmart, from Target, from other places. This is fact. And they are a publicly held corporation. So a publicly held corporation enforcing code of conduct. So when you talk about code of conduct, you're normally talking about some strong relationship, like a code of conduct from a university to a student. That makes sense. If a student decides to go to the school, they have to abide by a code of conduct. Here, I'm a customer. I'm a customer. The leverage, the power is very different from if I was a student going to a school and I violated a code of conduct. Now, of course, there's always nuances in this case law. So what I need to do is I have to make up my case law. There's not very much of it from what I can tell. And that's why this is such a unique place to be because they have instigated it against me. And yes, I have interacted with their lawyers before. I have their emails. I know which law firm they outsource their legal work to. And I have his email. And in fact, he invited me to go eat a steak dinner or to have dinner with him and talk about the counterfeit issue rep while representing Hasbro. And I also have the email of the internal legal team, which to my knowledge is just one person. I talked to her on the phone, we emailed, and I assume she is still there, right? I don't know, maybe they changed people, but yes, I have her email as well. Now their response is just uh, kind of ridiculous. Here's their response. No action is being taken against your accounts at this time. We received reports that you posted several videos during the month of January 2018 that constitute harassment. We are unable to provide you with any more specific information. Very vague. When you talk about vagueness in the law, that's when people abuse the law. You can have a policy on its face. It looks really good. But then, because it's so vague, the enforcement is totally different. So I could be, they could have really penalized me. And then someone like Jacob doing the exact same thing, if not worse in my opinion, can get off scot-free after calling all of MTG headquarters supporters losers who live at home, right? That's not harassment, apparently. So they gave me the name of, um, and this is kind of ridiculous because they know I have their emails, right? Like, Wizard of Coast LLC, PO Box 707. So they gave me, they didn't even give me their reg regular address. They gave me a PO Box. Attention legal department. The legal department, to my knowledge, is just that one person I talked to the phone who left voice messages. Okay, so this is how unprofessional their legal department was. They called my company multiple times, leaving multiple vet messages with our secretary. And our secretary thought it was a joke and it was spam because he said, oh, you know, some wizard called you, Tony. Ha ha ha. I mean, and I didn't even understand what that meant until I was like, wait a second. What was the wizard's last name? Oh, you know, some East Coast, West Coast. I was like, oh, man. So imagine Wizards of the Coast calling your company about, you know, and leaving a message with a secretary and their name is Wizards. And when they ask, who, who is this? Wizards. Yeah, we had a riot. I mean, it was both hilarious and also very sad because then I would have to explain Magic the Gathering to my coworkers who obviously felt it was very funny. And we still talk about that today, the wizard that was leaving me voice messages or leaving the secondary messages. And she got two messages. And they both, and when I asked who's calling, she said, oh, a wizard is calling me for you, Tony. I was like, I didn't even put one and one, I didn't, put one and one together until like later i was like wait a second until they emailed and they kept calling they called my cell phone 
We talked for hours and hours. They have my cell phone number. Why am I sending them a letter? I have their cell phone numbers. Assuming, or I guess they, I have their company phone numbers. They have my cell phone number. It hasn't changed. I talked to the head of from Wizard of the Coast side. I talked to the outsourced law firm, which is in Houston. It's a very big law firm, and I'm sure they're paying off the nose to you know have this person quote talk to me. Essentially, you know, he was a pretty cool guy, and he depressured the situation. And if they did that, I would be okay. But it seems like that they want to continue this. And I'm going to say this. I had the, the best constitution professor that I can ever imagine. He was very bold, pretty. He was cursing all the time. He practiced his First Amendment. What this guy's famous for is First Amendment law. This guy, freedom of speech, when you can use it, when you cannot use it. And he taught me well. He taught my class very well. I think we might have been his last class now that I think about it. Fantastic professor. One of just the, I mean, you hear him lecture and you're just inspired. They, out of all the people they sent the, this letter to, no actions being taken. Da, 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 da. They should have done a little research. Right? Because I, out of that class, it was a, how many people, 40 people, 30, 45 people in that class, maybe 50. I don't think a single one of those people would back down when faced with a restriction on what freedom of speech on social media by a corporation. You are the customer. I am a customer. They are restricting my freedom of speech as a publicly held company with a vague social media policy that they are selectively enforcing against some people, but not against other people. MTG headquarters has stated it quite well. A lot of people threatened him, posted pictures of his wife. None of these people are receiving letters like this. That is the problem with their code of conduct. A, I don't believe it's enforceable because I'm a customer. I'm a customer. That relationship, I'm not going to your school. I'm not an employee. There is not a strong relationship on your, you don't have, whether or not I buy your product, that's a decision I make. So, they they should have let sleeping lions lay, but now they got into this, and I am. Here's the key. Here's the scenario, and I know not everyone. I do have some trolls in this channel who don't like me for being me, because I speak my mind, and I I'm a business owner. Not everyone's gonna like that. I understand life is difficult sometimes and you feel like it's unfair and you look at me and you feel like I shouldn't be where I am, but I worked for every inch. I clawed, I scratched. It is difficult. It is very difficult to get to where I am today and nothing was given out to me. When the law works this way, not everyone can fight. They cannot. Either maybe they can't afford it, maybe they don't have the knowledge, maybe they settle. There's many reasons someone cannot fight a fight like this. I can fight this. Uh, it's very little cost to me. They asked my legal representative to send their legal representative something. That's okay, I'll represent myself. For them, they're going to hire that really fancy law firm in Houston again that may cost $800 an hour to battle. And a lot of you might say, hey, they're just going to delay you. No, not if it's that law firm. That law firm costs so much money. 
that they could be out six figures within two months. I am familiar with that law firm that they outsourced work to. For me, the PR is definitely worth it. Uh, it is definitely worth it because freedom of speech, especially in today's climate, is a very important issue. It just is. It should be protected, and I'm in a position to fight for it. In a very unique position where I have the knowledge, I can represent myself, I have the skill set, and I have the desire. My constitution professor would be very proud if I won a case like that. He would, you know, I, I might, you know, if it really got to the point where it became a big deal, I would love, to, you know, nothing would, I would just, it would make me very happy. Um, it would make him very happy too. Anyway, bye guys.